Welcome back. And if you haven't gathered by now, I'm gonna kind of skip around and skip some steps. Like I put the rods and pistons in. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Put the rings on, check side clearance, put them in, torque them. It's basic. Uh, the only reason I'm going over to grain the cam is because big block forwards came with two different timing sets along with, I believe small blocks did as well. But you can get the wrong timing set and it'll be a big problem. So it'll actually be four degrees advanced. And I do things a little bit differently, not too much, but this is a cheap degree wheel. You can pick them up online. I'll post um, links to the degree wheel, the um, deck bridge, and the regular dial indicator. But you wanna start off by finding TDC, actual TDC, which the industry standard pretty much is roll the motor over and wait till you see 50 thousandths down, which I need to go back to that. and always rotate the motor clockwise, the direction it's actually gonna be running. Checking TVC doesn't actually matter because you won't have slack in the timing set, but for degree in the cam, it will matter. So, you wanna roll it up till you're 50 thousandths down on the board, which I already did this and set everything up, so I know I'm a little bit past it, but it's roughly 12 degrees. Continue rolling it over until you go past zero, which you should zero it by now, and continue back down to 50 and that will also be roughly 12 degrees i'm not quite to 50 yet but if you're off a little bit you can just bend this a lot of people try and loosen it and spin that degree wheel some uh, other degree wheels are kind of fancy you can loosen the locks and actually spin the wheel and not not spin the center hub these are cheap they work fine you don't need an expensive degree wheel um if your cam's within a degree it's close enough you can try and get it closer than that but with the resolution a wheel this small and your dial indicators and stuff it's just not going to happen I did already set this to zero. Make sure your push rod is in the same plane as the travel of the indicator, or you will have an issue with it. So this camshaft, this, I did not want this cam at all. I had an option of three camshafts, so I had to pick one. This was literally the only one that was bigger than what was in the motor previously and didn't make the power I wanted to make. So this is, I'll post a link to this cam as well. We'll see how it does, but it's a uh, comp cam's thumper. It's 170 degree lobe separation, which is not ideal for what I'm doing, but it is what it is. It's what I can get. So it's 102 degree center line, so all you're gonna do is run this up. I already have the indicator zeroed at the peak of the intake lift. And you'll start to see it climb here in a second. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna wait until you'll get all the way to zero. Make sure you know where zero's at, which is right there. So I'm gonna back it off a little bit. And typically people will go 50 thousandths. On more aggressive cams, which this isn't one, you shouldn't go 50 thousandths um, before and 50 thousandths after to get your center line, just because if you have an asymmetric lobe, you could run into an issue with that. So 20 thousandths is probably a better idea, which I'm gonna be off a little bit. This motor doesn't turn over nice because it doesn't have low tension rings. Um, so there's 80 and we're 70 or 71 degrees. I don't know how well you can see that. So we'll go back up to zero. It'll come back down. You'll write your 70 down so you know what it is. And then you'll continue back past zero until you're roughly 80, I'm a little bit past 80, and it's 132. So you'll add 70 to 132, so it's 202 divided by two, and it's 101 intake center line. It's pretty easy to check. I do have a solid lifter in there, which the reason I have a solid lifter is um, checking piston valve clearance, which I'm gonna do right after this because I don't know what piston valve clearance is gonna be in this setup. Um, and I'll go into the solid lifter later, but it's 102 degrees in the center line. It's close enough. I'm not going to mess with it. If I had one of the adjustable timing sets, I might try and get it exact with the resolution in a wheel this small and the indicators being off. 102 is close enough. I know that it's not a four degree advanced timing set. So that's all I really care about in this motor. If it was off more, I'd do something about it, but this should be fine and we're going to run it. So it was a real basic rundown. Like I said, I'm gonna skip around and not show everything. Like putting the rods and pistons in, it's pretty self-explanatory. I know people are gonna say, or be curious to check. I think an air hose just blew up. Um, people are gonna be curious about rod side clearance potentially, but yeah, I've gotta go fix an air hose. But people will be curious about uh, rod side clearance. Rod side clearance is not that important. All that really matters is there is rod side clearance. As long as you have some, it's better than nothing. I'm sure I cut part of myself off because I had the screen flipped the wrong way. 
But um, a lot of engines now are going to piston centered rods. So you have a real narrow opening in the rod or in the piston and it actually centers the rod off the piston. And if your clearances are so loose that you're losing so much oil outside of the rod that you have an oil pressure issue, you've got other problems anyway. So rod side clearance should be checked. You should make sure you have some. The other thing you should check is um, camshaft end play. If you don't have any cam end play, you will eat that thrust plate right there. Or if you have too much cam end play, you'll have problems. If you look down at your lifter bores on these engines, you will see the lifter is offset on the camshaft and it's to rotate the lifter so it wears evenly. So a lot of people ask that online, I see that pretty often. But now the way I check piston and valve clearance is a little different. I'm gonna put the cylinder head on and do a little bit of a rundown of that. Um, make sure you have a head gasket the same compressed thickness. This is just a generic Felpro head gasket. Um, it's 41 thousandths compressed. You don't really need to torque the cylinder head on. Just drop it on, zip it tight, half, I mean halfway, a couple head bolts in it. And I'm gonna check piston and valve clearance with a dial indicator as opposed to clay. You, should use clay if you're going up in um, valve diameter or changing valve angle, angle or anything like that just to see radial clearance. I'm just going to check with the dial indicator. These are the um, pistons that came with this motor. Obviously, it's just a stock bottom end engine, so I know uh, radial clearance won't be an issue, but um, actual piston and valve clearance could be a problem. I would like to run a little bit more on the exhaust side. Typically, 100 thousandths is acceptable. 80 thousandths on the intake is acceptable. It's not going to have that high. It shouldn't be that big of an issue. My only concern is heat, the um, exhaust valve. So I'm going to put the head on, go over a few things, and we'll check piston valve clearance. So this is where things are going to differ a little bit from the way you've seen this done versus the way I do it. I'm going to put the cylinder head on real quick. So the head gas starts in the block. I changed the number one valve springs from the comp springs to um, just check your springs. I bought these at the hardware store. They're nothing special. And if I can get this to sit down on there. So I'm just gonna throw a couple bolts in there. The rear wheel's still on. Um, I know I'm gonna get some crap for not torquing this head, but I'm just throwing this head on. And this head gasket's been compressed plenty of times in its life to be 41 thousandths ish. I did buy three eighths push rods. I don't know why I did that. Hopefully they work with factory rockers. They might not and we might be done for a couple days. All right, there's a solid lifter installed right now. And the reason I used a solid lifter is because it will still compress the valve spring, or it will still compress the lifter with any tension at all on it. So the way I do this is I set these essentially to zero lash, which is right, that actually worked out perfect. a little drag on it, not much, a tiny bit of drag on that. So the other thing I don't particularly care for is people say 10 and 10, 10 before and 10 after your valve overlap, 10 degrees as far as crankshaft rotation. I think it should be checked at 15 before and 15 after just because the different cam profiles are available now. Um, you could end up having an issue. So it's easy enough to work when it's all set up. Uh, we're at top of the center right now, so let's see. All right, so the intake valve is just not opening, and I'm going to set it at 15. Try and get this in a slightly better position, if I can, and might have to go off the exhaust side. I should have set this up sooner. Luckily, I cast iron heads, so it's a little bit tricky with these rockers. Zach called me, so now I get to edit that out. All right, so I'm at. Um, 
15 degrees before top and center. So you put your dial indicator on there, set it to zero, and this spring's actually a little bit stiff to be doing this. But you push straight down to the retainer, make sure your rocker doesn't hit your actual indicator. And we have one, two, well over 200,000 piston valve there. So we'll go to 10 degrees, which is where people typically check it. Re-zero the dial indicator. Same thing, push down on it. Well over 200. There, go to five degrees. If it starts to get, I mean, at this point, I don't think we're gonna have an issue. This is actually getting hard to push down. Zero it again. Make sure all the issues. Still tons of clearance. Did actually touch the top of the piston there at 200. So. Getting a little closer to shy of 200. So 10 degrees after top dead center should be the closest. Theoretically, the piston is to the valve, depending on the camshaft profile. Let's see how close we are. Won't just pop the retainer off partially. Tons of room still. So five degrees further. And we have tons of clearance. It was the closest at 10. So we'll roll this back over to top dead center on the compression stroke and set up for the exhaust side. And hopefully all is well. I was actually nervous about piston to valve clearance on this because of the duration of the cam and the piston's almost flush with the deck. I don't know anything about this motor. I bought it from a junkyard, locked up, it was an industrial engine, and I have no idea why it has almost no piston to deck clearance. Take my lifter out. So the same thing, essentially set it to zero lash. So we wobble a little bit, tighten down, tighten a little more, and you can feel drag in the push rod that's essentially zero lash. Set the dial indicator up, and we'll see how the exhaust does. These springs are actually a little bit too stiff for this install height. This is a 1 8 and 1 800 install height. Um, these are for a 1 900 install height, but this is what I have right now. I wouldn't typically run a spring this height. So we'll roll it over until the exhaust valve is opening, should we have to top and center. where it should theoretically be closest. We're gonna check at 15, and then 10 and five, and we won't go all the way past it. Well, we'll see. With how much clearance the intake valve had, I'm not super worried about this. So we'll put 200 thousandths of preload in it. Make sure we're not touching the rocket, which we're very, very close. Right, so let's go to see if I can get my thumbs in there to check this. Tons of room. 
probably 10 degrees. Just like 200 thousandths preload, and I don't know if you can actually see that. I guess I can just watch the video afterwards to see where it ends up. It was over 200 thousandths. We'll go to five degrees. Not gonna bother re zeroing it. We'll just see how far it moves. Yeah, there's 200 thou there still. We'll go zero. piston to valve clearance this thing has and it runs okay at this low of a compression ratio. This cam doesn't do what I want it to do. I can put a bigger cam in it. And these heads are already shooting for double valve springs. And the three push rods seem to clear with a stock rocker. And the rocker seems to travel on the valve tip appropriately, so the light seems good. We'll see what if the hydraulic looks in there, how uh, valve lash is, but I think it's ready to be final assembled. <laughs> 